Aloha, and welcome to this week's edition of Business in Hawaii. I'm Byron Riddle, and we are broadcasting live from the Think Tech Studios in downtown Honolulu. If you want to tune in, we are at www.thinktechhawaii.com. You may also subscribe to our programs and get our mailing list at that site as well. The theme of the Business in Hawaii is to share with you stories of local business by local people. Our guests share with us how they were able to build successes in our sometimes challenging business environment. In the Think Tech studio with me today is Jennifer Dotson, Vice President of Philanthropy. Jennifer, welcome to the show. Thank you, Byron. Our first collaboration. I know, congratulations, <laughs> this is gonna be good. Thank you. So Jennifer, well, I, I'm gonna want to start first with your background. Tell us who you are and where you're at. So. Why don't you tell us a little bit, and then I have a lot of things that I want to ask you as well. Okay, so, all, all right. right, that sounds good. So like you said in your intro, I am a local person from Hawaii. I'm actually born and raised here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then I went away to school. I went to Georgetown University in Washington, D.C., and then I got my master's at the London School of Economics. Um, so I am currently the vice president of philanthropy at National Kidney Foundation, our CEO, Glenn Hayashida was somebody that I've known for a while, actually, and I've admired and known about him in the nonprofit sector for a long time. And I'm just so excited now to be able to work with him and the whole team at National Kidney Foundation. So it's really neat. Um, but really, uh, the, the way that I got to National Kidney Foundation is quite interesting. And I'll tell you a little story about it sure. later. But... Uh, let me l let you know that it started with Senator Daniel Akaka way back when, and I had gotten the chance as a child, a 12-year-old uh, schoolgirl, to visit Senator Akaka at uh, his office in Washington, D.C., and he inspired me to pursue a career in government. Now, how that then led a local girl from Hawaii to pursue a career in government and then come back to Hawaii and uh, dedicate uh, my work to the nonprofit and the people of Hawaii. I'm excited to share that story with you today. Good, awesome, and I appreciate <laughs> that because this is very good. Now, you also, I mean, you are, you have accolades all over the place. You, you were in PBN's Women Who Mean Business, you were 40 under 40. You were nominated for Nonprofit Businesswoman of the Year. You know, you are an amazing woman. That in itself says a lot. So, yeah, I want to hear some more about the story. So what, what else can you tell me here? Well, you're I want to too hear more. kind, Byron, and I've known you for a long time. So <laughs> I know you have a lot of accolades under your belt, too. So don't be, don't be so humble, but thank <laughs> you for um, those kind words. That, it's really because I've had some amazing mentors in my life, really wonderful mentors. One of the things that um, happened, like I told you, was Senator Akaka mm -hmm. inspired me from a very young age. I got to visit his office as a 12-year-old in Washington, D.C. How did that come about? Well, you know, I, I told my mom, I really, wanna, <laughs> I really want to go to Washington, D.C. I, I think this is something that I want to do. Uh, when I grow up, I want to be like Senator Akaka. Of course, we, you know, we came from very poor, you know, poor means. We didn't have a lot of um, uh, resources to do so, but we saved up. And uh, my mom and I went to Washington, D.C., and I got to visit him. And he let me sit at his desk. I mean, the big Koa desk it was amazing wow. and took pictures. And I actually kept those pictures because um, after I went to Georgetown University and um, graduated from the School of Foreign Service, I entered into the career that I had chosen as a young child, which was to work for the federal government. And um, one of my first assignments was in Hong Kong, and the first visiting delegation that I was in charge of receiving in Hong Kong in my job was to receive the Hawaii delegation. So Governor Cayetano was part of that um, delegation, and so was Senator Akaka. Oh, and wow. I brought the picture of us um, way back when on the steps of the Capitol, and he chuckled and he laughed and he said, I'm so glad you're following your dreams and your passion. Well, guess what? Um, Fast forward to now, where I am working at the Kidney Foundation, and I am helping the people of Hawaii um, 
battle kidney disease and mm -hmm. raise awareness about chronic kidney disease and organ transplantation in Hawaii. It's really because Senator Akaka, the, our beloved late Senator Akaka, he also succumbed to kidney disease. Exactly. And um, the family, the Akaka family, has been so supportive of the Kidney Foundation and um, so supportive in the work that the Kidney Foundation does. And I'm just so grateful to be able to work with this team and the Akaka family and all of our donors and all of our supporters in the work that we do. So it's, you know, there's a lot of work ahead of us, mm -hmm. um, but to have these wonderful supporters and wonderful people um, uh, supporting us like the Akaka family has been amazing. And it's really like it's come full circle. I was going right? to say, yeah, you, you've really come all the way around and back to where you, I mean, that's, uh, no, so, okay, you were in government. What brought you back to Hawaii then? Yeah, you know, that's a little bit of a sad story, but, okay. you know, it's something that I would freely share with you. The one thing that brought me back to Hawaii was 9-11. Mm. And I experienced some pretty deep loss um, mm. during 9-11. And I came home to Hawaii to heal. Mm. I came home to Hawaii to, to heal my heart. And one of the things that really helped me, I found, was reconnecting with the volunteer programs that I um, volunteered with as a child. So when I was 16 years old, one of the first uh, volunteer programs that I participated with was the Muscular Dystrophy Association. I was a camp counselor for uh, Jerry's kids. So those of you who remember back in the day, Jerry Lewis had the Jerry, Jerry Lewis, Lewis Telethon, Telethon during Labor Day. And so uh, there's this annual summer camp for Muscular Dystrophy Association. And as a 16-year-old girl, I signed up as a volunteer. Fast forward to when I did come back to Hawaii post 9-11, I reconnected with the Muscular Dystrophy Association as a volunteer. I found that volunteering helped me heal, mm. helped me find purpose in life, and helped me find joy and happiness because it is, it's an absolute joy to give back to this community that mm. I grew up in. And I, it was really neat. Well, so the connection is I ended up working for Muscular Dystrophy Association after starting off as a volunteer. So I became the healthcare coordinator at Muscular Dystrophy Association. Best job I've ever had. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got to tell you a little story because okay. talking about Jerry's kids and muscular dystrophy, as, as a kid, and I was probably 11 or 12, um, watching the show, I got up and got motivated and I went around my whole neighborhood. This was in Akahi, in Kailua. I went around house door to door collecting and we donated everything that I gained because of I was so motivated. So that's just a little little that's story really neat yeah. that's really neat and so you're actually it's a good segue into the philanthropy work that we mm -hmm. do at national kidney foundation but any nonprofit that you would come across in hawaii or or in the united states philanthropy is a voluntary act of giving with no expectation of something in return exactly. it's you're giving from your heart because you were so motivated to do so because of something you heard something you experienced, something you saw. And so I'm really glad to hear that. And that's the type of work that I get to do every day. I mean, isn't that cool? I mean, I get to work with people to inspire them to give voluntarily, to support something that's bigger than us as an individual, bigger than me as, as a person, bigger than any of us. And mm -hmm. I love hearing that story. And so um, it's, I, I can just imagine in my mind little Byron walking around Aikahi door to door and saying, yeah. hi, will you help support Jerry's kids? Yeah. So that's, that's yeah, kind I of a, how I started. I had a little jar, in there, jar yeah. coin, did yeah. you collect coins? Coins, whatever they dollars. would give. So I think a couple of people even wrote out some checks. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And yeah. every little bit helped. It yeah. really, oh, it really does. did. Yeah. So, yeah, I was inspired. Well, high five, Byron. That's awesome. <laughs> Well, <laughs> we should probably get in and start okay. talking more about kidney right. disease. Yes, yes. So let's start talking about kidney disease. Okay. Let's talk about what are some of the symptoms? Oh, gosh. Okay. So uh, I'll first start off the, uh, by letting you know we have an amazing clinical team at the Kidney Foundation. Okay. And so we have um, nurses, we have dietitians, a clinical staff that is dedicated to helping people learn more about kidney disease. And uh, what I do is I connect uh, people in the community to mm -hmm. our clinical team. So 
Amazing, amazing team. I really encourage you to meet them. Uh, the work that they do every day is with the people. So what are the symptoms of kidney disease? Exactly. We, really, let me, we really say that there's things like that cause no, it, it doesn't cause any pain. The symptoms of kidney disease doesn't cause any pain because the kidneys don't have a lot of nerve endings. Oh, right. And so it's not like you walk around and go, oh, 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 I feel something, you know, kidney Kidney, kidney stone you do. Well, yeah. kidney stone you but do. That's but that's different. But, yeah, it is different, but can be related. But anyways, I, I'll tell you a story. And this is one of the stories that I heard right early on when I first started with the Kidney Foundation. And it was about uh, Jared Iwase. Do you, does this ring a bell? Does mm. uh, the Iwase name ring a Iwase bell? Iwase name is... Okay, so what, is it, what does it remind you of? Somebody, an elected official, perhaps, Maybe right? Yeah. Could be, okay. Yeah. So um, the cool thing about what I do at the Kidney Foundation is I connect with donors, but I also connect with you know businesses and also government and just people in our community. It doesn't matter what your last name or who you are, but it just so happens that one of the stories that I heard was about Jaron Dewase, mm -hmm. who's the son of our um, uh, former senator uh, Iwase, mm -hmm. Randy Iwase, mm -hmm. and his uh, story, and we ended up writing our, um, our annual appeal letter about this story. It was written by his mo mother, mm -hmm. Jan Iwase, and it tells the story about how Jaren, uh, a, a young man, a healthy young man, still played tennis and coached his nephew's soccer team and all of these things, he actually went to the eye doctor. Mm -hmm. And the eye doctor um, immediately sent him to the emergency room because of something he saw. And that eye doctor saw that there was bleeding behind the eye. Now, as you can imagine, um, someone who has bleeding behind the eye, you would think has a lot of pain, but there was no pain associated with his symptoms. So uh, as he went to the doctor and was diagnosed with kidney disease, it was because of what an eye doctor discovered. So if you can imagine, immediately I tried to take you know, steps to uh, address the kidney disease, and it was quite severe at that point. Unfortunately, uh, as the story goes, Jaren passed away mm. four months after he, oh. um, after this was discovered. Quite quick. Wow. But um, usually, I will tell you that um, I brought something to show you here. You can hold this. But um, there are five stages of chronic kidney disease, and so you ask about some of the Symptoms. So, mm -hmm. if you look on, uh, you know, if you look on the back, mm -hmm. there's um, the, the symptoms, um, and then on the uh, on the front, there's things that you can, there's programs that are associated with that. So, this this um, what we call five stages of chronic kidney disease. You can see in stage one, there is kidney damage with with you know lowered kidney function. Stage two, there's further kidney damage, right, and uh, kidney, lower kidney uh, function. And so as you see, each one of the stages actually shows there's a reading here, mm -hmm. a number associated, and it's GFR, it's called GFR. And you get this on your lab report. Every time you go to the doctor, mm -hmm. you actually get this number on your lab report. So it corresponds with this these five stages. So you can actually check yourself or your loved one the stages the, of kidney disease that you may or may not be experiencing. But this has been something that actually, something that, another thing that was really cool is that Hawaii, in Hawaii, the National Kidney Foundation of Hawaii mm -hmm. developed this GFR reading so that it would go on everybody's lab report whenever you go to the doctor. So next time you go to the doctor, do me a favor, I'll take look, a look uh, at that look. and look at what the number is. Okay, well, we're gonna take a short break. Um, this is Business on Why. We'll see you back here shortly. Hi guys, I'm your host, Lillian Kumik from Lillian's Vegan World. I'm, I come to you live every second Friday from 3 p.m. And this is the show where I talk about the plant-based lifestyle and veganism. So we go through recipes, some upcoming events, uh, information about health, regarding your health, and uh, just some ideas on how you can have a better lifestyle, eat healthier, and have fun at the same time. So do join me. I look forward to seeing you, and uh, aloha. 
Hey, hello everyone, and welcome to the Think Tech Hawaii studio. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii. We air here every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Hawaii time, trying to bring you issues about security that you may not know, issues that can protect your family, protect yourself, protect our community, protect our, our companies, the folks we work with. Uh, please join us and uh, hope you can um, maybe get a little different perspective on how to live a little safer. Aloha. Konnichiwa. え、テンクテックハワイが日本語でお送りしています。こんにちは、ハワイ。ホストのくにせいかりです。え、毎週各週月曜日、え、2時からですね、日本語で日本語で活躍されていらっしゃるハワイのいろいろな方をお招きして、
uh, and it's over 20 years old. It's one of the oldest kidney donation programs in Hawaii. It's and very successful yes, too. Yes, it's so. It's you know what? Any anyone who meets me says they have such a smooth and easy time donating their vehicle to kidney cars, and that's what we really aim to do. So. Um, you can do it online. Just go to our website, kidneyhigh.org, mm -hmm. and it actually walks you through step-by-step -step on how to donate your vehicle. And so um, it's really neat. If you look on our Instagram uh, mm -hmm. account, uh, we have a great social media account. We have Facebook, Twitter, and we have Instagram. But if you look on our Instagram, there's a picture of a very nice Jaguar that was donated to us. So we don't get just the... You know the junk cars we get some beautiful cars too because people are so inclined to donate to us this jaguar is nice. this beautiful beautiful blue xj and um a car like that we would welcome as a donation so um besides cars you know that we also um, accept household items and clothing mm -hmm. household goods mm -hmm. we're uh, one of the organizations that still does pick up so you call my number and you call kidney call, uh, kidney program and we will schedule a pickup in your neighborhood and come and pick it up right in Aikahi in right fact in if you want to. I'm not in Kahi anymore but that's <laughs> oh, where okay, I grew well, up. Yes. Your mom's house or something yes. like that right? So <laughs> <laughs> clean out mom's house. <laughs> sure. Uh, <laughs> let's, what other kind of resources do you have available to the people in need? Uh, if someone came to you what kind of resources do you have? How can you help them? I'm so glad you asked that too. And remember, I um, I work with this amazing clinical team, and mm -hmm. the, they're, we have registered nurses, we have registered dietitians. They have classes and educational programs all the time. Mm -hmm. So, for example, there's a diabetes self management program. Mm -hmm. It's a cl it's a free class that you can attend. You can register and attend. Anybody can register and attend. You can sign up your mom. You can sign up your uncle for it. So there's a diabetes self-management program. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a diabetes prevention program. So even before, even before you get down the line mm -hmm. of the, di the different stages of kidney disease, you can actually prevent diabetes. So we have classes like that. We have kidney screenings where we go into the community and we actually do a, uh, a health screening. And then um, that's when you actually have a, clin a licensed clinical staff walk through your test results with you. So it's really helpful. I'm, I mean, I always encourage people to go see their doctor, go see their you know, primary care physician. Mm -hmm. But I think we all know that it's, you know, not something that we can, are always Doing good about, basis, right? right? And right. I hope you're going to your doctor. But if At you're least not, once a year. right, good. But if you're not, and we have this free community screening, free in your neighborhood, please sign up, please join us, and you would be able to take advantage of uh, the screening as well as a, um, a, a licensed clinical staff walking you through what everything means, what are all these numbers mean on your lab report, exactly. right? Exactly. So, yeah. Is, is diabetes then one of the major contributors to kidney disease? And so, yes, so <laughs> uh, it's chronic kidney disease. Okay. And so I'm glad you said that. In fact, I was just talking with the clinical staff this morning. Diabetes is a leading contributor to chronic kidney disease. Mm. And so uh, we encourage people to really take care of their health, drink water, cut sodium, uh, uh, reduce sugar. And so uh, we talk about exercise and having an active lifestyle. It's all about raising awareness, right? Mm -hmm, Things mm -hmm. that you could do mm -hmm. right now, right today. And um, if, if not, we have other resources like these classes I told you about. And then I know you were very interested in the cookbook. Right. Yes. So you you actually I was going to mention. Uh, yeah, that, so. you wanted to ask you about this cookbook. And so we have this cookbook that um, is developed and it has recipes that even kids can do. In fact, the kids love to do the recipes mm -hmm. in this book. And uh, these cook these cookbooks are available for sale on our website, kidneyhigh.org. Okay. And so um, I know, Byron, you're such a foodie that you were kind of looking through these recipes and going, mm, yum, 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 I would do that. <laughs> and it's all healthy, right? Yes. It's all about using less salt, less sugar, 
um, reducing protein, increasing vegetables, right? And drinking that water, right? Mm -hmm. Drinking mm -hmm. that water. Not so, soda, water. Not soda, water. Yes. So, yeah. Thanks for asking all about that. No, that was good. I'm glad. Yeah. Now, I want to talk about some of your major events because I know mm -hmm. you have ongoing events. So let's talk about some of your events. All right. Well, I know you are going to come to all of our events this year, right? So we, met, we mentioned that uh, some of the fundraising work that we do mm -hmm. is talking with our corporate partners mm -hmm. and individual donors, but really bringing them together for events. So we have an annual gala mm -hmm. that happens every year in June. And guess what? We actually have a date this year, and it's June 10th. 2020. Mm -hmm. So I know you're going to mark your calendar and of come. Course. And the fun thing about that is um, our last year's gala, we actually had one of those backdrops mm -hmm. um, uh, this called a step and repeat, and it was printed by JPG Media. Mm -hmm. And so we're very grateful for their contribution to us. So thank you so much mm -hmm. your, for your part and uh, JPG Media's part in helping us. So mm -hmm. the gala brings together everyone to the Honolulu Country Club, and it is capped at 30 tables. We actually maxed out uh, last year. We actually had 31 tables. You stuck one And in. so, yeah, we had to squeeze <laughs> one more in. And it's a really great way to honor the kidney champions mm -hmm. in our community. And mm -hmm. so last year's kidney champions honored, we had Brian Lee, who is a plan uh, giving estate planner, mm -hmm. um, and he's been educating people about, like I told you, including Kidney Foundation part of as part of their estate plan. And we had another Brian Lee, a Dr. Brian Lee, a nephrologist from Kaiser, mm -hmm. um, who is also honored. And then also Dr. Gerard Akaka from Queens uh, Hospital and uh, the son of Senator Akaka, the man I actually have to thank for bringing me uh, back to Kidney Foundation. And so uh, besides the gala, we also have a walk. Uh, it's called Walk on the Wild Side and mm -hmm. where we have walk teams that come together. The walk team that you see here, all these smiling faces is from um, one of the families of our corporate sponsor from Diagnostic Laboratory Services, DLS. It's so cool because all of these teams come together to walk, be active, um, raise funds for uh, Kidney Foundation and DLS. The really neat connection to DLS is that their current president is also a kidney donor. That's so isn't that neat how we can have these fundraising events that not only raise funds to help Kidney Foundation, but it brings together the amazing people from our community to be together and meet each other. And this photo that we, saw, we just saw was actually a kidney donor holding the hand of a kidney recipient. Okay, and we're we're really down neat. to the last couple minutes and seconds here, but I okay. also want to mention the new center. Oh, yes. Before we have to go, Absolutely. we're down to 15 seconds. So. Okay, so <laughs> we have to mention that we are building a new facility in right. West Oahu in Kapolei. Right. And it is a, um, it's going to be our new resource center named in honor of Senator Akaka. Of course. And so, yes, the future looks bright. And we invite you and all of our supporters to please help us make this dream a reality and help the Akaka Community Center come to life. So. Stay tuned. Okay, with that, we're out of time. Thank you, Jennifer, for joining us today. And a big thank you to the production staff here in the studio. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, please email your information to shows at thinktechhawaii.com. Business in Hawaii airs every Thursday at 2 p.m. We look forward to seeing you here next week. Thank you.